I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Nancy Fox, who runs the Fractional Connections community, helping all flavors of fractional executives build a thriving business with a continuous pipeline. The Fractional Connections community started over a year ago and already has over 450 members. Nancy is based in Los Angeles, California. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. I'm so excited about this conversation. I was really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. We work with fractional executives to recreate their corporate income without the insane hours, building the business they want on their own terms. Jay Kingley, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, shares best practices along with tips and tricks on how you can build a robust pipeline to become fully booked with clients, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Enjoy today's episode. Nancy. Let's say I've had a 25-year career in finance, with my last two years serving as the CFO of a $500 million logistics business. I left corporate a year ago and established a business as a fractional CFO. I get introduced to you, and I want to understand what the Fractional Connections community is all about. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch. Go! Fractional Connections community is here to help you as a new or not so new and even established fractional executive launch or grow or scale your business with the most advanced strategies in networking, marketing, and sales. What motivated you to start this community? Why why do you do it? Well, you know, the interesting thing, Jay, is that I've been coaching a really long time, but um, a number of years ago... Um, I was working predominantly with professional service firms, law firms and and CPA firms. And they started to engage me in a way that I'd never experienced before. I was part of their firm as a part-time leader in business development. And it got to the point where I was working so much with them three days a week. I had an office in there. I had my own email address in there. I was going to their company um, outings. I was going. I was on their executive committee. Um, I, had my, I had, you know, my office was on executive row. I, mean, I was part of the team, even though I was not full time. And I was, and I had all these other coaching clients and other, you know, other um, engagements. And that was really the forerunner of what we call fractional leadership today. I was a fractional executive in that firm, and that went on for almost five years. And it was the absolute most rewarding experience I had had in all of my coaching in my business life. And the reason was you get the best of both worlds. I had all these other clients that I could work with and I was working with them half time, just the way I had always been. And then I had this engagement that was, I was so deeply involved in the organization with the most amazing leader and the greatest professionals and and I helped them get promoted that it became clear to me that this was a model that, you know, really I'd like more of. And then of course, fast forward after the pandemic, the entire fractional, the term fractional became, um, you know, uh, you know, our, a very common term in our world. It used to be called outsource this, outsource that. There's a, you know, so but that, uh, my experience of that was really so, so powerful that I said, I want to do more of this. And when the trend started to kick in, I said, you know, it's a very lonely place if you're when you're a new ex, um, entrepreneur after a long executive career, it's lonely. Everybody's telling you you should join this network and go to that, you know, that event and and you should have this person telling you how to start your business and that community. How do you decide what to do and who to work with and how to where to spend your time? That was really the impetus and the, the uh, incentive behind Fractional Connections community. I had lived it and experienced it. I was coaching it. And I knew that I could provide really top solutions for so many fractionals. One of the things that we believe is that being a solo fractional executive is absolutely a team sport. So I think the sense of community is critical. And, and in fact, 
one of the things that I, I have noticed in talking to people who have left corporate, we call them the second acts, who set up their own businesses. The thing that surprises them the most is how lonely it is because they're used to being in that environment. And I think a community like yours is essential to uh, their success. Let me, let me ask you a question on the growth of fractionals given your experience, because you were in as a fractional very early in this trend, and it has certainly exploded. Do you see this continuing where fractional employees will become pretty standard way for companies to get the right resources into the organization? Or do you think this is in the in the words of happy days at some point going to jump the shark you know it's really an interesting thing it looks like it's going to be a really long term solution and here's why i've never seen this before in all the years that i've been in the in the business world which is saying something for the very first time leaders at very senior levels were not leaving their jobs because they were kicked out or fired or laid off they were choosing. They no longer could stomach the corporate politics, the limitations on their ability to contribute. The, and the revolving doors were not at levels below them. The revolving doors were at levels, you know, at their level and, and above. So they were sick and tired of it. And with the advent of Zoom and the ability to work remotely, now all of a sudden they had freedom and choice. And that didn't exist before. I have never seen people at those senior levels choose to leave their jobs. It took me four years to make the leap because I was dying to get out, but I didn't have, you know, leaving a, a big paycheck, like multi six figures. Who's going to do that? Well, now they're doing it a lot. And I don't see that changing because a lot of companies are complaining about the talent gap, the talent loss. But guess where they're going? They're going fractional. So that's where they are. So I don't see it changing. In fact, there's another factor that I want to share with everybody. And the trend is that younger and younger people are going fractional. So let's say you're not 30 years in your career. Now you're 20 years in career or 15. You still have the ability to be a fractional leader because you still have 15 or almost 20 years of experience and expertise in your toolkit. And so now people who are in their 30s and 40s and early 50s instead of their 60s, are going fractional. A lot of them. In fact, I would say the majority of my newest clients are all in their, their 30s and 40s. That's different. When I first started working with fractionals, they were in their 60s. Well, some interesting historical perspective. If you go back to the 90s, when the digitization of corporate America was occurring, fueled by the rise of the internet, um, there was a lot of thought given to uh, one of the, the works of one of the Nobel laureates in economics, Coase, who talked about the optimal size of the firm and how that was driven by transaction costs. And the thinking was the internet would dramatically lower the transaction cost of the employer-employee relationship. So there was a view, in the, and back then I remember it was called Free Agent Nation which is that everyone would mm -hmm. contract independently with one or more companies to do the work. Now, that was 30 years ago. And here we go. It takes that long for this now to become a serious trend in business. But I think that would support the fact that this isn't going away. Now, <clears throat> imagine I'm that fractional. Take me through the benefits that I would get from becoming part of your community? I think everybody is different, but um, I would say that the first thought that most fractionals think about when they come into a community is, um, will it help me get clients? Now, I'm not saying that's an incorrect desire because of course that is, you can't have a business without clients. It's crucial. It's like, it's the price of entry, but we're not a recruiting community. And there are, there are, business ventures out there. There are matching companies. They don't call themselves recruiters. They call themselves matching companies. And they, they do attempt to find uh, engagements for fractional executives and they take a percentage of the engagement. And that's 
I think that makes sense. I mean, certainly there's an opportunity for fractionals around that. But when I'll just give you an example. I'm part of a peer community, a very well-known one. And in that community, there's a network of, and we, you know, they're posting all kinds of opportunities. If a business owner is looking for a fractional executive, they put it out in the network. And I'm going to tell you, for every request, there's like 20 or 30 fractionals responding. Get my point? So they want clients, but there are a lot of fractionals out there and the demand is not keeping up quite yet with, or the recognition factor isn't quite keeping up with how many people are going fractional. So we do need to, in my view, as a business, as a community leader, and I'm saying this to everybody in my community and outside of it, our role as community leaders has got to be a responsibility to generate demand. And I don't mean just help them learn how to get assignments. I mean, generating demand means we have a responsibility to help the business community be aware of fractional executives, understand the benefits, and understand how to actually select them and, and find them. So there's a responsibility around that. The benefits in our community are we're a learning and a professional development community. Um, we are not a big um, chat room. That is not our game. There are some that are like that, and that's great. I think it's great that people chat and share. Um, however, you got to be careful who you're, whose chat you're paying attention to, because if you're somebody, if you're talking to somebody who's you know has got a method that works for him or her, and it's not going to work for you, that could be you know that could set you back. Or if it's somebody who's just learning mistakes and you're sharing into their mistakes, you really got to pay attention to who you're learning from. I'm not saying people should learn my method. I'm a coach and I teach people and I share strategies with them, but I, I really believe in helping people find their own version that fits them for the right strategy. So we are a learning and development community. First and foremost, we really care about the development of every single fraction. We want them to learn and to grow and develop their business. Now, we are also a networking, a networking focused community. So we were the first um, speed networking uh, and probably the most well-known. I'm not saying there aren't speed networking events out there, but as it relates to fractional leadership, we're the most well-known. For some reason, and you have to ask the fractionals who come, they seem to like to come to ours. I hope it's the, I think, I hope it's the, the fact that we vet candidates. We don't let every person in who says they're a fractional, we vet them. I, I'm, I want everybody to know that when you submit an application to come into Fractional Connections community, I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile. I'm looking at your background. I'm looking at who you serve. So if I think you're trying to get business from fractionals, you're not coming into the community as a member. So we're careful. We want people to network with the right people. I'm all about that. And so we're learning professional development and networking. And that's where we have been for the last year. Now, we've learned a lot in the last year. So, um, you know, I'm happy to share what we learned and where we're going, but that's really what we're about. We're, we are really very much professional and, and business development oriented. We're marketing. We want you to learn marketing techniques and tools. We want to give you unique resources and templates and ways that you can grow your business and build the pipeline faster. Well, certainly, Nancy, our experience at Maven, where we work with fractionals to help them build their business. Getting the clients is absolutely the number one challenge we hear time and time again. And it makes sense. They came out of corporate. They didn't need to get clients. Uh, they, they work for the client. Um, and all their experience is about how they can serve their clients, not how they acquire it. And I think your community and your focus can certainly play a big role to help them overcome that hurdle, which leads me to ask you, there are a lot of communities. And as we talked about the enormous growth of fractional executives as a whole, there's a corresponding growth in the number of communities that are out there. So what makes the Fractional Connections community different than the others? Well, they're all different. So they, you know, To answer that question, Jay, I'd have to take it one by one. Um, but in general, I would say that the first thing is we're, we're, we're vetting the community, the, the members. So everybody, anybody in their sister and brother can call themselves a fractional. We're looking primarily to attract the C-suite level 
a fractional into our community. Not all, it's not rigid, but anybody that's at a relatively senior level is really our preferred member. Um, and that's because the more senior you are, the more senior your network will be, and the more senior your network will be, and the more senior your relationships will be, the more the decision makers that you have to share with other people. It all ties together. So I would say, number one, we're vetted. Uh, and the other thing is, there's a it, we have a policy in our community. It is a no pitch zone. So that means no links. We don't let anybody promote their stuff in there except for one day a month. They get the last Thursday of the month to promote anything they want, but only one day. And that's it. And anything else is we remove the links. Um, all of the classes and all of the courses and all of the tools that we give the members, um, and, and they're very um, thoughtfully selected about what it's going to take for you to grow your your business or your practice. Um, we provide them in the Fractional Connections University. We do have something in the Fractional Connections community that's pretty unique. We have the LinkedIn Promo Club. Most of the people in the profession know I've sort of grokked the LinkedIn situation. Um, there are a lot of people who have bigger followings than me, but when it comes to cultivating a targeted following of the right people for you through LinkedIn, I've gotten the formula and I share it back. So we have a, what's called the LinkedIn Promo Club. And in there, um, all of the members who decide to participate can post their LinkedIn posts and we'll share them, like them, and um, we'll comment on them. So we can help our everybody everybody's visibility and following grow, which is great because the it helps the algorithm. And um, going forward, we're going to have even more around that. So that's another thing. So we have a lot of training. We have a lot of tools. Uh, there's, a, there's another thing that makes our community pretty different. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of this one, actually, because if I were a fractional again now, this is what I would want. I want to hear from the business owners who hire fractionals. What the hell are they thinking about? Well, we interview entrepreneurs who have actually hired fractionals. We, I interview them. I ask them all the hard questions like, you know, what did you go through? How did you find them? What did you like? What didn't you like? How did you choose one over the other? They answer those questions and I share those interviews. So if you're a fractional executive and you want to know what, they're, what business owners are thinking, watch those videos. And the other interviews that I do, I will interview fractional executives on a podcast and I'll help them feature their own unique value proposition in a short video and I'll post it on LinkedIn. So we promote fractionals. We're helping people gain recognition, knowledge, learning, and real intel. And we talked uh, up till now about some of the challenges facing fractionals, but I wonder if you could sort of pull it all together, give us your perspective on the biggest challenges that fractionals are facing today? Top of the list is how to get clients. So that's clear. Because so many people are becoming fractionals in every flavor category, COO, CSO, CTO, CIO, CFO, CMO, blah, 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 on, on and it goes. Now there's a lot of competition. And how do you distinguish yourself? And I think a lot of fractionals think they're distinguishing themselves, but are not. They sound alike. How do you differentiate yourself? Not so easy. It's not an elevator speech one and once and done. It doesn't go like that. You have to really give it some thought, some strategy. They try to figure it out on their own. They throw a lot of stuff up against the wall. And if it doesn't stick, they try something else. So there's no continuity. So I think they need solutions like yours um, at Maven. I mean, they do. And not enough of them are using professional resources. They, they try to figure it out on their own. Um, I think that's one challenge. The, the, the challenge really is underneath that, Jay, is a, a fear of risk. I mean, I'm going to invest in myself. I don't even have any clients yet. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to put food on the table? How am I going to replace my salary? Those are risk factors that they've never had to deal with before because they've never been in their own business. Guess what? If you don't invest in your business, why will anybody else invest in your business? So there's that. Um, and I think they really don't know how to network. I think they think they do, but they really don't for the most part. They've never had to network to get clients. They've never had to network in a way that's going to attract people into their world, into their circle of influence. They don't know where to network. They're, they're bombarded with everybody telling them this group is so great. And they're not meeting decision makers. I know this because I know where they're going. 
So when I guide my clients or when I guide the members of our community, I'm really honest with them. I'm saying this is a very nice group of people, but who's your niche? Who do you want to work with? They're not in there. I've, I know how to search the right people and I will tell people where to go and where not to go. They don't have to listen to me, but I'll get them to the right people. I've proven it time again. I've cracked niche markets that I had no business being in by learning how to enter markets in the right way with the right people. And I just want to share it back with everybody. They'll get more business that way faster. Your observations are 100% on point. So what have you learned from your community that you didn't know when you started it? I've learned that more fractionals have imposter syndrome than I ever thought possible because they're senior executives. And I would think, oh my goodness, why would there be a lack of confidence? I realize that when I ask them certain questions, they reveal the truth to me when I get one-on-one with them. And I understand where it comes from. I felt pretty naked when I left my corporate career. Without that VP title, I went, who the hell am I? So I get it. Um, I think there is that. And I think that um, I didn't realize how fearful about risk they were. I didn't know that. And they are. It's one thing to take a risk when you are an executive in a company and be accountable for that. But when you're on your own and the impact is you can see in your bank account, it's a whole different thing. What advice would you give the fractional executives that you work with? I think that the advice is, look, when you start your business, if you make a decision to leap, you've got to leap uh, and recognize that you don't know everything. And you have to really choose very carefully who you're going to listen to. So free is not always, you know, fabulous um, or safe, by the way. Free is not always safe. And um, I'm not saying you have to pay for advice, but... I'll tell you, you get what you pay for. You, there's, there are a couple of businesses out there that are called things like pick my brain. I find that repulsive because after all, as a fractional executive, you want people to remunerate you, give you revenue for your expertise, your knowledge, and your experience. So if you're trying to get stuff for free, how? why are you not making the connection that free is not giving you the best possible input, especially when you want people to pay you for your input. So you're a mirror. They don't really know that. My advice is you are the mirror. What you, how you present yourself is what you're going to attract back. You have to walk the talk. If you don't walk the talk, you can't hide it. There's no hiding it. There's no hiding anything anymore because people will suss it out and they can feel it. So I want people to understand that they have value. They get to create their own unique value proposition. And even if there are a hundred CF fractional CFOs, there's only one you. If there are a hundred CSOs out there, there's only one you. And trying to make yourself look like everybody else and say the same things that everybody else is saying isn't going to get you where you need to go. That's probably the biggest advice is to really get the help you need to just differentiate yourself, especially today. That's what I, that's the first thing I would do if I were starting. Well, the truth, well, the truth is there's no such thing as free. Uh, there is, I'm going to pay money today, get value in return, or I'm going to spend my time with low quality resources. So I'm not taking out a pocket, but I'm paying in my time and I am paying in how much calendar time elapses. Because I'm going to have to learn all this on my own. And this is not my area of expertise. I always say to people, let's say when we opened up, I pretended I was a fractional CFO. And when I talk to a fractional CFO, I ask them if they're any good at what they do. Are they good at being a CFO? And, And those that truly are, well, absolutely, they have confidence in their ability to deliver. And then I look at them and say, so why would you think you're good at what I do? Because if you were good at what I do, that's what you would be doing with your career. I don't do what you do because I'm not any good at it. So create a team. And I think a community is, is a key component of that who can play to your weaknesses while you focus on your strengths. And that is always the recipe to be massively successful. But That leads me, we're talking about free. Tell me, what's the cost to be a member of the FCC? 
in, in 2023, when we launched, we had two levels of membership. One was free and one was paid. Mm -hmm. um, and in the free membership, um, people were able to come to our free um, speed networking events and they got to be, they got a few of the free, free courses and things like that, the basic ones. And they got to be part of the LinkedIn promo club. In 2024, we've upgraded and revamped um, Fractional Connections Community. So the first thing that people need to know is um, Fractional Connections Community has actually been acquired by a company called Elite Suite Solutions. There will be two levels of membership to start and a third one coming down the pike, which is actually part of our value proposition going forward. Uh, the Business Essentials membership level is $19 a month. And it will include the um, the speed networking, the LinkedIn promo club, and all of the courses and tools and resources in the in the Fractional Connections University. There will also be monthly um, uh, sessions where I or one of my team members will be leading uh, discussion groups on certain key topics. So there'll be group sessions. So nineteen dollars a month for the business essentials level. And then there is going to be another level, which is the work sessions level. Uh, we believe in the flipped education model. So right now you can take a lot of courses out there and then you have to implement it on your own. We find that most people don't complete courses and don't implement. So we're gonna flip the whole model around. And so we're gonna be able to teach people the right information, like their elevator speed. They, there's some essentials that they, they don't really have. They don't know how to build an email marketing list. They don't know what to do with their LinkedIn profile that's actually gonna attract the right people to them. They don't know how to use AI. They don't know how to create content. They don't really know how to even figure out where to network. Some of them don't even know what kind of business entity they should be start using. So. We are going to have sessions every single month, and they're going to get it done with us once a month. And that level is the, is the work sessions level, and that's going to be $49 a month. So those are the two new levels that, we're, that we have, um, and all of it is still geared to professional development, business development. Nothing's changing in terms of the networking, except that everything now is going to have you know, two member levels now, and they're both paid. But as you can see, these are very reasonable cost levels. This is not going to make anybody rich. We want people committed and we want them investing in themselves and we want them to value what they're getting. And we want to grow the community and we want to still maintain that vetted community. In um, Later in this year, within the first quarter, we have a very exciting um, new uh, level starting, a new forum group, a peer forum group called the M&A Peer Forum. And that is called MAP. And it's all for fractional executives who have M&A or private equity experience because we're going to be working with them in a peer, in a peer setting uh, to develop their opportunities to generate demand in, within the M&A private equity space. And so we have an amazing agenda ready for them. That will be a very select group of people. They have to apply to get in and they have to have already had experience with M&A or private equity back companies. So that's coming uh, within the first quarter. Well, congratulations on the acquisition. And it sounds like for the members of the community, it's going to support a real step up in the value that each of them will be able to get from being part of what you're offering. Um, I want to add one thing, if you don't mind, Jay. Um, I have a new partner. Um, and his name is Doug Miller. He, he is already a fractional CSO, fractional CRO. And he comes from an amazing background in Oracle and other large enterprise companies. And he's also been a CEO of his own smaller SaaS company. So together, we're looking at developing a lot of tools in the technology side of things, too. So we're going to be working on that together. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit more about you, Nancy. As a fractional executive, you work with us to help you recreate your corporate income without working the insane hours. Our fractional flywheel service focuses on how to price, package, and position your years of experience and expertise, create and refine your go-to-market strategy so it's effective and efficient, and then nail your execution. Working with us, you will build a robust pipeline to become fully booked, start getting paid what you're worth, 
and eliminate your brute force marketing. Maven's unique fractional catalyst service for those serving startups and early stage companies gets you acting like a venture capitalist in managing your business and as an entrepreneur when working with your clients. Achieve financial security and reward with clients who want you to take charge, ask for forgiveness, not permission, in an environment without all the politics and bureaucracy you find in corporate. Email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking to Nancy Fox, the CEO of the Fractional Connections community, focused on helping their 450 members to build a thriving fractional business. Nancy, let's find out a bit more about you. And let's start with what's been your biggest professional accomplishment? I think just making the leap out of corporate America was in, immense for me because um, I always expected that I was going to be right, you know, just climbing that ladder forever. I, I, that's how I saw myself forever. And I, I don't come from an entrepreneurial background. Nobody was cheering me on when I left corporate life and said, oh, what a brilliant idea this is. They thought I was absolutely crazy. Uh, there are people that I rode the train with into New York every single day for 20 years and they're still in their jobs. And I think that it was a pretty big deal. I will never forget when I said to myself, I'm never writing another resume again. I never have. I said, I'm never working for another boss again. I never have. It was a huge thing. So it took a while to do it, but I'm glad I did it. Well, that's what an entrepreneur is all about. Now I want to go to the other side and ask you to share your biggest professional failure, but most importantly, what did you learn from it and how did it shape what you do today? When I started, um, first of all, I had no sales ex ability or experience. So, but once I got the hang of it, it was really interesting. I loved it. Within my first year of coaching, I landed this assignment with an international company. And at that time, they had a global team and how they communicated was by phone. So everything was done over the phone. There was no this. There wasn't even Skype. They hired me and I, I, I sold a pretty damn big package. And the package was um, unlimited coaching for an entire year. And they paid me a lot of money. But the deal was I had to coach um, um, virtual teams. And I, the problem really was is I didn't manage the time on those calls well. I was unable to keep them on time. And I wound up going over time and it, it, I didn't manage it well. I was, I was uncomfortable. I didn't know how to lasso them in to, you know, stay on time and to be focused. And so I let them run the show more. I didn't have the, the experience guiding them on virtual calls that way. I knew how to do it in person, but on a virtual call that way. And, and secondarily, the leader of the group, the leader of the team, I found out was lying to his people. He was dishonest. And I really didn't know what to do about that. I was inexperienced to deal with that. So the, the trust level was rough. You know, I, there were some things I did right, but there was a lot, of, there were some things I did wrong. And so we ended the assignment early and, and it was appropriate, but I learned a lot from that. I never let people run the show on time again. I managed time. I knew how to do it. I knew how to get people to properly engage. I, I learned from that so much. As you look back on your career, any regrets? I'm sure there are some, but the big one is like I didn't I didn't start earlier. I went I was so miserable for four years before I actually did it. Um, so maybe a little bit of that, but you're not ready till you're ready. So there's a little bit of regret there. Um, I think that for the most part, I haven't really regretted too much. Um, there's one other thing that comes to my mind, but I handled it, you know, at some point, I just think I waited a little too long. I had a, um, I had a client, a, a prospect that, you know, looked like they were engaging, they were about to engage me and then they just kept dragging it on. And the reason was, cause I didn't follow my own coaching. Um, the actual decision maker, you know, kept, wasn't in the room. And so after about six months of them dragging things on, I said, that's enough. I said, listen, I said, um, you got to get the decision maker in the room or I'm not, I'm, I'm withdrawing the proposal. So that shook them up and they brought me in with the managing partner and two major partners. And 
They signed the deal that day. Just goes to show you, if you don't talk to the decision maker, you're not going to get a decision. So what's next for you and the FCC over the coming 12 months beyond what you've already shared? Well, um, the the growth of Elite Suite is really what's coming next. And Elite Suite is really um, looking at talent management as a whole and where are the big growth opportunities in talent management and human capital development in much bigger circles. Doug and I are focused on how to, how to elevate or how to enhance and how to accelerate demand for fractional leadership and find more homes for them, proper homes, proper engagements, help them grow their businesses. Yes, that's part of it. And we're sourcing where the pockets of business growth are as this, in other words, we're working backwards. Where is the growth potential? Not how do you find clients? Where's the growth need? Where's the, where's the opportunity? How do we generate demand from the, from the, from that side of the equation? That's what's next for us. And we are identifying opportunities that are severely under, under tapped. And it's pretty exciting. And also what's next for us, and this is huge, is, you know, the whole AI technology side of this um, is very, we're very heavily focused on how that's going to play into our business and also the fractional executive business businesses. Nancy, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and on our YouTube channel, for the video version. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and your family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.